Hey guys, what's up? It's I Can Fly Jake, and today I am here with news from the Tuesday, September 11th status reports from the Daisy developers. And let me tell you guys, it is a good one, and you are going to want to stick around to see all the new gifts um, and some really, really cool information regarding future content that we think is going to be coming pretty soon. So that's really good news. So first off, to start off the status report, they say that the content update that's been on the stress test has now been moved to experimental, which if you guys don't know what that means, basically there are stress tests where they temporarily try new fixes, risky stuff, see how it affects the servers. And then there's the slightly more stable experimental version that runs always 24 seven. Um, and it's supposed to be slightly more stable than stress tests, of course. So anyways, guys, it's finally been moved over there after a long time waiting. And the content of this update is, you know, as we've seen on the stress test, it's the exact same. So that includes the M4A1, the Mosin, hidden stashes, performance improvements, dynamic loot, which includes, you know, there's going to be no more pressing F on an apple tree to look for apples. There's no more pressing F on the ground to look for sticks or pressing F on the ground to look for rocks. You'll actually see dynamic, you know, you'll find rocks on the ground spawning dynamically around the character. You'll find apples under trees, pears under trees. I believe there's even plum trees now. Um, I have yet to find a plum in the game, but I haven't really looked too hard. Um, and then also scopes. So there's been about, I believe, five to six scopes out of the game. They look really, really good. Um, and so that's that. That's what's been added to the experimental, plus a few other, you know, changes and tweaks. But anyways, guys, moving on. Also, guys, along with the content update being pushed to experimental, they're also allowing for community servers. And this is quite a surprise. I think we didn't expect it right away. Um, so basically, they said they'll allow for some time for these servers to, you know, handle all these swapping over. But guys, you'll be able to play on some private hives, which is really good news because I don't like all the server hopping um, to find better loot and such. So overall, community servers are just easily a really good thing to come to the game. And I miss first-person servers being populated. So hopefully we can get some more popular first-person private servers into the game because I just think that's one of the best ways to experience the game or at least a good way to mix it up. And if you haven't tried it, I recommend trying it. It's a lot of fun. It's more immersive. And I personally find it to be more fair. But if you don't like it, you don't have to play it. That's the good, you know, that's the that's the versatility of Daisy in action. Um, also, they said that within the next week, now this might be debatably bigger news even, than what I just said about community servers. They're going to be planning to release these server files within the next week. Um, so this allows for servers to have like custom settings on the map, speed up time. I believe they can even change things such as like how long you can sprint and how much loot spawns. And I, I don't know. I don't exactly know all the specifics of it. It's like some really low level modding almost feels like, but the actual full modding tool set will not be coming to the game before beta. That, that will not be coming before beta. But they are saying that an experimental beta is not far away whatsoever. Um, and that actually brings us right into the next set of news, which really, guys, is the fact that they're talking about releasing a lot of new content in the upcoming weeks. And even that experimental, uh, the experimental version of beta is what they're going to call it anyways, um, is probably less than a month away, about a month away, as long as no unexpected issues pop up which we all know they probably will, but either way, it means they're getting really close to it. And they've said that now that they've fixed a lot of these internal, you know, battle like kicks that were happening, or not internal battle like kicks, but internal problems such as the battle like kicks and performance issues with the servers, they're going to be able to start revving up the fryers um, on the content that comes out because a lot of the content, you know, it's not like the entire dev team has been backed up as these issues have persisted over the past two or three months. They've actually been able to implement a lot of it. And they said that while they've got another content patch coming up, very soon for the stress test servers, this one won't include vehicles, but the vehicles will not be far behind that. Like they're almost ready to go, at least the first couple of them. Um, I believe we're going to be getting two at first. It'll be, I think, the V3S and one other vehicle. I don't remember. Um, but either way, any vehicles in the game is awesome because the fun part is not the vehicle you're driving. It's the fact that you're driving a vehicle in general, at least in my opinion. Um, I'm, ex I'm excited to see what kind of content they reintroduce. I don't know if this will be more guns, more loot. Uh, personally though, any of that is better. I'm just tired of finding the same loot. So I'm ready to find some, I'm ready to find some pitchforks and, um, you know, mining pickaxes in the world, just random loot. It just adds a lot more variety to the world and makes it seem more alive in general for you. Xbox guys, they wanted to say, it may sound like all this is coming to PC, but they said that really just as every stress test, stress test that has been pushed to the PC, when they've found that it did any sort of fix, they then pushed that update to Xbox as well, and they will be seeing all this content and features very, very soon. Like, it's not going to be lagging behind much at all, and we've seen that the performance on Xbox is running quite well, and so it's not like it's that much of a limitation. Um, so that's all really good news. Also, guys, they went into a bit more detail regarding the battle eye kicks, and they said that what was causing the battle eye kicks was some code written all the way back in May of 2016, 
which is crazy because they were saying they've been working on this this base 0.63 build since then, obviously, um, and then just recently it's been brought to us here in 2018. Anyway, so so that was back in May 2016, and they had to continuously roll back small changes to the 0.63 stress test build um, to check for any kick improvements. So basically, they wrote some sort of code way back then, um, and when they found out it was in their code that something was causing these kicks. They basically had to roll back small and small changes to see how it affected the game because if they rolled back too many changes, it could cause you know detrimental effects across the entire game, not just affecting kicks. So they did a small change, then they put out a stress test, and that's why we've been getting new stress tests basically every single day um, for the past couple of weeks or so, at least during the work week. Uh, and finally, guys, they've actually fixed it. So they believe that 99% of the kick problem has been solved, um, along with a lot of issues regarding the region server performance. So you guys may have noticed that if you're in the UK um, or sometimes on a certain US server, whatever it is, uh, you may have really terrible performance you know, regarding like just that region. But if you were to join a different region, you might actually get better performance, even though the ping is terrible there. Um, so that's also been worked on and is quite a bit improved as well, but they think they've, you know, boiled down the problem of that, which is really, really cool. Also, guys, we're moving on to some of the cool content they're actually showing us here regarding animations and a few features coming to the game. So first off is optics. optics. So if you guys haven't noticed this, and if you didn't know, fun fact, if you find a scope and you can't put it on your gun, but you still want to, you know, look through the scope to, you know, look farther away in the distance, you can still do this. So let's say you have a PSO scope or the PSO-1 scope, um, you can actually just put it in your hand and then hold right-click, I believe, and your character will bring it up to his eye and you can actually look around. But it feels very, very buggy in the current version of the game, and they think they have a fix for this, which is really good. Um, and so basically he said that the issue was something to do with uh, when you move your, you know, your gun around, you have to move your mouse more to look through the scope. So when you put it in your hands, um, it might take you like a lot of distance moving your mouse to actually you have to move your mouse a whole lot move your hand really far just to look a few inches to the right or left um, and it was hard to fix this but they've actually done it so basically what it is is once you're looking through the sights you'll have to be or looking through the scope in your hand you'll have to be basically you have to stand still your character's not allowed to move and if you've ever used binoculars in real life uh, you cannot move like be walking while you look through them it, it completely messes up the vision so this makes perfect sense and they've added animations regarding that I'll show you some on screen now and it looks pretty, pretty nice, I'd say. Um, they only show us through whatever scope they're currently looking through. And it may just be a demo, but I don't know if it's going to look... It will look different between every type of scope. And if you guys didn't know, we don't even have binoculars in the current game. So hopefully those will return very, very soon. I bet they'll be coming in that next content patch that they said that's coming in the next couple weeks. So that's really, really good news. And I'm excited to get more content in this game. And also to be feeling just this game running super stable. Because once this game is running stable... Um, and all that it's going to be up to the modders a lot to bring popularity to this game honestly and if you want to see how the mods might save this game i have a video actually made on this and i'm you know it's up here right now you can click on it in the cards if you want to go watch that um, but anyways that's not all so that was the optics also the guys they've added the surrender function um, and before surrender was very basic and basically while your hands were up um, you couldn't like you were slower and you could only walk uh, but now I believe there's a whole new set of options regarding surrendering and being restrained. So I don't know if this applies to being like when you're surrendering, but when you're restrained, for sure, you can't access your inventory, which that's not too new. Um, but what they've been able to do is when you're surrendered, there's a bunch of new uh, you know, animations you can do specific to when you're surrendered. That way it makes holdups a lot more safe for the person holding somebody up. Currently in the game, if you guys might be wondering, like, why is surrendering such, you know, a popular topic, and why, are, why is anybody even passionate about, you know, just the option to throw your hands in the air and say you surrendered? Well, the reasoning is, if I currently, you know, aim my gun at somebody who has no, no items in their hands, and I say, dude, get on the ground, like, I'm, I'm, this is a robbery, you know, don't, don't pull anything crazy, you know, they can go, okay, yeah, yeah, I won't do anything bad, um, but then two seconds later, they can pull out their gun because, you know, all they're doing is laying on the ground or standing there naked. Uh, but if they actually put their hands up, they won't be able to actually pull out the gun, or at least there'll be a long delay for it, and the person holding them up can safely rob them, um, especially if you tie somebody up. If you tie somebody up, they can't, you know, they can't even access their inventory. They can't even just get their hands out from the handcuffs without wiggling for a long time. And as you can see here, there's a really cool running animation for if you have a person captured and they try to run away. They have this really cool animation for running. And they even talk about in the future making your character, like even when he's restrained, you know, arms behind the back, he'll be able to actually still possibly drink from pawns and such. So like let's say you're getting, you're, you need hydration as you're sprinting away from the people who captured you. 
um, you can still just stick your face in the water and drink. Now, this isn't a feature yet, and they planned it for the future, but I'm really excited to see that, and I think that'll be funny in clips and just kind of add to the humor of being held up. Because honestly, guys, some people get really frustrated when they get robbed, but honestly, it is one of the most hilarious experiences if the person robbing you really plays along with it. Um, so yeah, there's some restrained animations and also a surrender animation there. Uh, and I'm also excited to get the selection wheel for actions in the game. The Xbox, I believe, already has this. Um, but basically, currently, you have to press, you know, between F1 and F12 you know, on your keyboard to get anything to pop up. But soon, we'll have kind of an action selection meal, just a meal, uh, wheel, just like you see in maybe Fortnite or PUBG. So that's very good and definitely a necessary change because it encourages those actions in the world. Uh, and currently, it really brings you out of the experience when you're trying to just wave and all of a sudden your character's showing the suicide animation or you're trying to point and then you're doing the flip off animation it just that's that's a problem and this selection wheel is pretty necessary it just makes everything a lot easier overall guys to sum it up there's some really cool content that's going to be coming in the next couple of weeks we've got the first content patch now on experimental i should be doing some live streams soon of that if you guys are any if any of you guys are members of the channel i wanted to say i'm sorry uh, and by members i mean like the people that are doing like the monthly payments to be a, you know they're they sponsored me on youtube I'm very sorry I haven't been able to stream recently, and I hope to get back into streaming very soon here, at least you know, t twice a week, once a week, somewhere in that. I'm, I haven't done it for like a week and a half, though, and I just feel really bad. And the reasoning is I've got lots of tests this week, um, days in a row, and my girlfriend of long distance visited last weekend. So that's a lot of personal information, but I thought I'd go ahead and give it to you guys, just because I like to be in touch. And if you guys feel like joining the Fly Crew, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more Daisy content. And hope to see all of you guys in my next live stream or video. Thanks for watching.